Hello everybody, this is Matthew Billington here with Big and Bright Inflatables. Today we're talking about generators. I wanna help you pick the right generator for your rental business. I also wanna help you take care of it so it's ready for you when you need it the most. All right, the first thing we need to talk about is how big of a generator do you need? What do all these numbers, 7,500 starting watts, 6,000 running watts, 11,500 starting watts, 9,200 watts, what do all of these numbers mean? Before we get into the real technical book smarts of this thing, let's just talk street smarts for a second. The main thing that you can look at when picking a generator is you look at each individual section. So this is one 20 amp breaker, this is one 20 amp breaker, this is one 25 amp breaker. Over on this unit here, this here in this box is a 15 amp breaker, 15 amp breaker, uh, 15 amp breaker as well. So from a street smarts point of view, you can utilize each one of these breakers just like you would on a regular rental at a house. If you've got a 20 amp breaker, well, you know you can run any of the blowers on that, you're gonna be okay. If you have a 15 amp breaker, you know that you might have the possibility of tripping it, especially if you were to use two one horsepower blowers. Basic street smarts is to just use each one of these sections like you would a house with a 15 or a 20 amp breaker. To get a little bit more technical though, so that you understand, we first need to understand what watts are. Watts are volts times amps. Okay, volts in the US, we're almost always gonna run 120 volts. So that's a pretty easy number. Just remember 120 volts. Now you gotta look at your amps. So most one and a half horsepower blowers run between 10 and 12 amps, okay? So let's say that you're gonna be running 12 amps. 12 times 120 equals 1,440 watts. That's how many watts are going to be used on a one and a half horsepower blower. To make it kind of common sense using this particular generator here, we have three sets of plugs with their own breakers. This third one is a four prong breaker for like an RV AC unit, something like that. But you can jump on Amazon and get a converter that will make it look like a standard plug for you. On this particular unit, let's say we had three blowers, uh, let's say one and a half horsepower blowers. We could use one one and a half horsepower blower here at 1440 watts. We could have a second one here at 1440 and a third one here with the adapter at 1440, which would give us 4,320 watts is basically what we need. So we look over here, there's starting watts versus running watts. What we're talking about is running watts, ongoing watts throughout the event. So if you needed those three blowers, that 4,320 would fit under the 6,000, we would be good to go. And it's always a good rule of thumb to have a 15 to 20% cushion. So that difference between 4,320 and 6,000 would be a perfect 15 to 20% cushion. So I briefly mentioned starting watts versus running watts in the last section. So here's the deal. When you turn on a blower initially or really any product, it's going to fire up and it's going to take more amps for a few seconds before it calms down. So while your blower might use 12 amps ongoing, it might bounce the whole way up to 20 amps for a second while it calms itself down. During that time, your generator is going to need to supply more watts to get it through that initial startup period. That's why all generators are gonna have a higher starting watts than they are running watts. But if you run ongoing at a number higher than the running watts, you can cause uh, breakers to blow and you can cause overheating and you can cause failure with your generator. So your running watts need to stay below, in this case, 6,000 preferably with some safety, 15 to 20%. But for that initial kickoff, it's okay if they fire the whole way up to 7,500. Let's talk about breakers. Just like on a standard house, you're gonna need to separate your power out so that you don't blow a breaker. Each unit is gonna have a certain amount of breakers. In this case, we've got three. So this one here is a 20 amp, this is a 20 amp, and this is a 25 amp. So if you were going to be using three blowers, you'd wanna space them out because if you put two blowers on any one of these, there's a good chance that you would blow it. Let's talk about types of generators. Most of the time, what you're going to wanna buy and most of the time what you're gonna to wanna to use is this open frame generator like this. They're louder, they're heavier, but they are way less expensive. And in most cases, this is what you're gonna to wanna to use. Every once in a while, 
for like say a wedding or an event where it needs to be quiet or you have specialized electronics or maybe you're running a sound system and you don't want the sound of a generator over top of that, you can use what's called an inverter generator. Inverter generators are quieter, they run cleaner, but the downside to them is they cost a lot more money. Let's talk fuel. Most of the time the generators we're gonna use are gonna use regular gasoline, but there are some dual generators that can use regular gasoline or propane. Another street smart thing to think about is how long will your gas last? How long is this generator going to be able to run? Again, the more things that you plug into it, the more load that's gonna need, the faster the gas is going to go through. Always have extra gas on hand. Always have a plan for somebody to be checking on it. You don't want your bounce houses just to start dropping because you run out of gas. So always have a backup plan to have more gas ready to go. When picking a generator or adding accessories, you gotta think about portability. These generators are heavy at least 100 pounds, up to 250 pounds. So often it's a good idea to buy the wheel kits and the handles. That way you don't have to carry them around. This one here doesn't have it. It's over 150 pounds. That one's hard to move around. Another street smart thing to think about is having a backup plan. What happens if right in the middle of your event, your generator fails. I gotta have an honest moment with you. A few years ago, I was doing a rental. We had a bunch of bounce houses up and one of our generators failed. We couldn't get it restarted for five minutes. In the meantime, two of the nine inflatables went to the ground. We had to rush kids out. People were in a panic and we just couldn't get the thing to restart. If we had had a backup generator that we could have switched over to right away, it would have made our life very a lot easier. Okay, now you've bought your generator. Let's talk about the things that you need to know. The first thing you need to know is most generators ship without any oil oil in them. It is absolutely necessary to have oil in this machine. The first thing you need to do is fill the oil to the top. Most generators use 10W30 oil. The second thing you should know, and most people don't do this, is you need to break your generator in. You need to run the generator for five hours on a very light load to get the motor going and let all the metal shavings work their way out into the oil. Then you need to drain the oil and put new oil in and your generator will be broken in properly. Another street smart thing to think about is using fresh gasoline. Gasoline can start to go bad even after 30 days. So if this generator sits in between rentals and the gas starts to go bad, you can have issues. It's always good to add a fuel stabilizer to your gas to help prevent that. You should have a basic maintenance checklist. Let me read some of the things off that you should have on your checklist. Check oil before every big job. Change your oil every 25 to 50 hours ran. Clean and replace the air filter every 50 hours. Check and change the spark plugs every season. Start it once a month, even if you're not using it, to keep it healthy. A few other final tips for your generator. Label it every time that you change the oil so you know the last time it was changed. Carry spare parts with you like an extra spark plug or filter and carry tools to be able to change it. Always start the generator at the shop before you leave so that if you have problems, you can deal with it before you hit the road. A few final tips. Every time you change out the oil, mark the date on the generator so you know when to change it again. When you're going out to an event, carry spare things like spare oil, spare spark plugs, toolkit to switch the spark plug out if you need to, extra air filters. Before you leave the building to go to any event, start it. Make sure that it's working properly. You don't want to get out in the field and find out that you have issues. It'd be better to fix them before you ever leave the building. All right, final words. If you take care of your generator, it's going to take care of you. But if you don't take care of your generator, it might leave you high and dry on a rental. Take care of your generator, do your maintenance, and you will be successful. Thank you, everyone. Big and Bright Inflatables.